how do I be a more impactful coach? Lisa, do you want to start? Question. I feel like I'm going to say that every week because we have so many great questions. They are great questions. So what, what I find myself saying in the answer to this question is really allowing yourself to be impacted by coaching first. And that has made such a huge difference to me. And when I remember when I first started out, I understood that as a concept. And it was like a, a, a way of selling, right? Like a coach needs a coach and you have to have a coach to be a great coach. And it was like, I understood intellectually why that made sense. But I would say it's more recently that I've really started to allow myself to experience the impact fully of being coached. And I'll share a couple of stories with the current coaches who Sam and I work with. So Carolyn Freya Jones is a coach of ours. And what I've really noticed from being in Carolyn's world or having her in our world is that I, I take bigger and bolder action and more consistent action because of the work that I do with Carolyn. And it feels like Carolyn is such an incredible safety net. Like that's my experience. Like I have really experienced from her. I can't get this wrong. I can't get this wrong. There's nothing I can do that, that we're not going to be able to handle. And, you know, that's just been life-changing for me because having someone in your corner that you feel really loved and supported by, like, I want to give that to somebody else. And I see the value in that deeply see the value in that because I've experienced it. So that like, I wanted to share that and, and Gary, our other coach, Gary Mahler, he has a similar effect. So when we've, we've had a coaching session with him that just the next day, my mind was just blown. Like I woke up feeling so expansive, feeling like my thinking had gone not to the next level, but to like 10 levels beyond where it currently was. And it's like, wow, like that holding that space for me, having me see that possibility and having it feel doable, that's life-changing. That's really life-changing. And as a result, like Sam and I are up to things in the world that we, we would be like, what, us, we're doing that? So by me experiencing coaching that has changed my life, I can now go out and offer that to somebody else because I've really allowed myself to be impacted by it. And I'm really an ambassador now for coaching because I've, it's a felt experience. I've seen the difference that it makes. And anything kind of before that was an intellectual understanding. And, and that comes with a lot of doubt around, you know, like, is coaching really worth it? And that's never a powerful place to come from for, as a coach. So that I would say that's probably my number one thing is to just allow yourself to be impacted first. And you will be so much more involved in the conversations and the work that you do with someone. Um, so that's number one. And number two, the second thing that I will share is just more of a, a tip really, like really check in. When you're in those coaching sessions, really check in, slowing down and checking in with your client that's in front of you. Like, what are you hearing and what's being said? Like, you tell me what you're taking away from this. Because the amount of conversations we've been in, Sam, right, where we've said something and then we've asked that question and it's like, oh, it's been diluted. It's been filtered through their lens, through their belief system, through how they see the world. So we might be saying one thing that's being interpreted through our belief system and then they're getting hold of that those words and they're having it mean something different so the way to really create impact is like just keep checking in with your client like what are you hearing because then you'll know whether we can move on or whether we need to slow this down and explore some more in this space because it might not have landed yet and that's your job to figure out if it's landed and we do that by asking so they're, they're the two things that I would want to say. I mean, there's so much more we could say on this topic, but they're the two things that feel really important for me to share. Yeah. Um, and you're gonna, I know you're going to talk, Sam, around like what stops you 
What have you noticed that stops you from being an impactful coach? Yeah, definitely. And if I may, Lisa, there's two things that you've touched on there. I think just it's so important to highlight. There's the, what the first one was like, I had this image of falling off my bike as a kid. And how when I was a kid, it wasn't wrong to fall off my bike. <laughs> it's totally okay. I would never have learned to ride a bike if I didn't fall off and hurt myself a few times, right? But somehow as we get older, it becomes not okay to do that. And, and, and I love that, you know, through our work with, co with our coaches, it's like, hey, I'm falling off my bike again and it feels really good. Like it feels really good to have somebody there to help me pick my bike up and get back on again. Mm. I don't have to do this on my own. That feels really, really, really powerful. And the other one was um, what really stood out to me and what you said, Lisa, is how easy it is to forget that what is spoken and what is heard can be two really different things. Like words are so subjective. I might say one thing and a client is going to hear another. So what you shared around just really, are you speaking the same language? Are we listening to the same language? It's just, there's something so beautiful in what you shared. I just wanted to kind of just speak to that a little bit. Mm. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't know why I think there's this rebel. I mean, I've always been somebody in my life who like, does things differently and it's, it's a curse, but it's also a blessing at the same time. And when, when this question was asked, it's like, how do I be a more info, impactful coach? What comes to my mind is like the opposite. It's like, how do I, how am I not being impactful? Like, when am I not being, what makes me not be impactful, right? It's like the rebel in me. I've got to answer the opposite. I don't know what it is, but it sometimes can be helpful. And no, next week I'm going to ask the opposite of the question that we're actually getting. So that will work. But, but because I know you're doing that, I'll then answer the question <laughs> just because I don't want to play the game. <laughs> you should know me well enough to know that by now, Lisa. But yeah, I, we were talking about, you know, what, what really, or I was thinking about what really stops me being an impactful coach. And, and it really, it's really very simple. Um, well, the idea is simple. And that when I notice that I'm not being an impactful coach is when I'm really not listening. Or, or at least I'm listening to the wrong thing. So I might be in a coaching session with somebody and I'm, I'm hearing, it doesn't happen so much anymore, but it, it still can. I'm hearing, am I being good? Especially in the early sessions, like, am I being a good coach? Am I being impactful? Am I, am I being interesting? You know, I'm trying to be interesting rather than interested kind of thing, right? So what I'm listening to is the narrative. I'm listening to my story. I'm listening to my insecurity, to the to kind of the, yeah, that inner critic, the inner dialogue. And that stops me being impactful because I'm not listening to the person in front of me. And, and what I've learned through coaching, like you, you hit on the nail on the head, like having, having a coach just is the number one thing for me, which helps me be a more impactful coach is really understanding and being able to notice what is belief and what is narrative and what isn't. And, and using that not as a, a tool to say what's wrong about me, but just a reminder of what I'm listening to. Ah, I'm listening to the narrative. And that's my check-in to say, am I listening to what the person is saying? Am I listening to what they're saying under what they're talking about? Am I really listening to what, how they're saying it? What's the energy behind it? And that for me just allows me to be more present and really check in with the person in front of me what I would say on that is that that's a practice. Like we call it a coaching practice for a reason, right? It's mm -hmm. like, I had that about you, Lisa, but especially in the early days, and I see this in the coaches we work with in the school sometimes, is that we, we, we have this idea that as soon as we're a coach, we've got to be the best coach in the world and we've got to be an expert and we've got to nail it and we've got to be the next Steve Hardizan, right? And that can be really unhelpful, really unhelpful. And so just being where we're at and practicing and working with what we've got in this stage of evolution that we're in, because there is an evolution to a, a business or a coaching business for me and being a coach. When we're really in tune with where we're at with our evolution and accepting of that, then we can just slow it down and just do the best we can. Yeah. And that often for me is when we're being more impactful is when we're just being what we're being and doing the best that we can. Um, hi, Sandra. She's checked in. So good to see you on. And um, the last thing I was going to share was just a little story. I had a, a conversation with a coach uh, not so long ago, actually, and it was really interesting. And th the way that he listened was different. Like I, all of all of the coaches that we have are just the most incredible listeners. And this this guy, like it was kind of strange stuff. He was like really like in the screen like this, like really watching me. And I was like, wow, this is wicked. This is really different. And halfway through the conversation, he said, Sam, I'm going to stop you. I was like, what? He said, what's the pain? 
what's the pain? And I was like, whoa, where did that come from? He said, listen, you're free to throw that question out. Like it might mean nothing to you. It might mean nothing, but it came to me and I'm sharing it with you. And I was like, wow, how brave, right? This, this question he's thrown at me might mean absolutely nothing. And it might be that it doesn't land, but he is willing to just ask the question because it was on his mind. So there's some, there's some just some of that going on as well, that bravery and that really landed. And I was like, hmm, let me think about this. And there was this, I remember this feeling of, oh, there is something. It's right in my gut. When I'm speaking about this subject, it's right in my gut. And we got into this conversation about what that was. And it just blew my mind how I'd never connected, I'd never seen before what the subject matter we were talking about and this feeling. And that came from him listening, noticing, and him saying what was on his mind without fear. And now listen, I'm not suggesting for a second people start just going out there and just start saying everything that's coming to the mind. But there is a bit of that in coaching when you're ready and when it feels good, being more impactful can sometimes look like being more courageous and yeah. saying what's on your mind and being okay with it, not making sense or not landing. And you might want to preempty that with Sam, like he did, Sam, if this doesn't make sense, it's cool, like leave it, but I'm going to ask you. And it happened to be really impactful really really helpful so i love that sam can i, I just because what was occurring to me as you were sharing earlier was around assumptions mm. right like how many times do we make assumptions or do we not say something because we think it's obvious and then things get missed right we're not giving the client the opportunity to say oh that's not what i meant yeah so i love that you've you've touched on that as well and that being unattached to offering like I don't know if this is what I'm seeing but what's the pain throw it out if it's not helpful yeah yeah I'll never forget it and then and equally there are other times where somebody's asked me a question I've gone no it doesn't mean anything to me and that's okay <laughs> you're totally okay so, yeah awesome any final thoughts Lisa and um, the other thing is just to get out there and get coaching Right, like if you want to really make an impact, allow yourself to be coached, listen to this live, right? Like really listen to this live and then check in with yourself and see, am I, am I doing all of this? Yeah. Am I? Because you don't need more information. You just need one thing, mm -hmm. one thing, and then dial that up or down in your practice and get out there and get practicing, get coaching. Yeah, absolutely. And listen to the live and then go back and listen to it again as if you haven't heard it before. Mm -hmm. It's we well, one thing I definitely know in being more impactful is that we can hear the same thing over and over again, and it will mean something different as we develop as a coach. So yeah, staying open to that is important, I think. Yeah. So that's it from us, uh, guys. If you have uh, questions, where wherever you're listening to this or or watching us, if you have questions, you can put them in the comments or you can send them to us, and we will get to them. We'll get to them at some point. We're going to get getting a backlog, which is good, but it's fine. We will get to them. Um, for those of you that don't know, we've got our Wealth Accelerator series coming up in June, and that is all about the money, money and coaching. So if you want to know more about that, we'll put the link in the comments. You're more than welcome to join us. It's a complimentary four-week event, and we cannot wait to run that. It's going to be absolutely mega. So other than that, I think that's it. Anything else from you, Lisa? No, nope. we'll be live on my profile next Wednesday. So come and join us there. And then back on Sam's the following Wednesday. Perfect. See you then, guys.